And now, live from the studios of Freedom's Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. No wrong, no right. I'm gonna tell you there's no black and no white. No blood, no stain. All we need is one worldwide vision. One flesh, one bone, one true religion. One and race, there's no wrong. There's no right. We just need one worldwide religion. One worldwide government. One worldwide. One, 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 one. Here it comes. You know, and that's been the attempt. And I tell you, if they're going to try and supply energy collectively for the planet, it wouldn't surprise me if one of the big giant chunks of that's going to be nuclear. Yeah, there are a lot of other ways to do it. You know, my thing is, is that I'm I'm much more in support of the concept of individuals creating their own power. And I think we would already be there if it was not for subsidizing of energy, you know, uh, uh, the economic and social engineering of individuals as it pertains to energy, the uh, making sure that subsidized with all the wars and everything for Exxon and Mobil and Texco and BP and whatever, so we can go over there and get you know cheap oil that costs us trillions of dollars to have access to. It's like it's a, I, I, we did the math in like, oh, five, oh, six. It was $137 a barrel above the cost just in the military aspect of the uh, the oil. So I'm going, this is, this is, get government out of the way. You want to be real conservative, Carl. It's get government out of the way. Our guest, Carl Grossman, K-A-R-L-G-R-O-S-S-M-A-N dot blogspot. Dot com. Carl Grossman, Carl with a K, Grossman.blogspot.com, and you get more information on him and his books. And, you know, with that little commercial, I'm hoping you can help me out here. How is it that you got involved in this? Why? What, what, what was your axe to grind uh, on this? Uh, my, uh, no axe to grind. My, my specialty is investigative reporting. I've been doing it for over 40 years, getting old. And I did it at a daily newspaper. I've done it in TV and I teach it. I've been teaching it for over 30 years at the State University. It's my specialty. You, you try to jump into an issue and find out as close as you can what the hell the truth is. And in the early 70s, people came up to me because at that time, talking about government, the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission wanted to make where I live, Long Island, into what's called a nuclear park, what it called a nuclear park, with a cluster of nuclear plants. Uh, and, you know, I... I, I 7 to 11, uh, sort of like Fukushima with a cluster of six. So I, I, I wanted to look into it. So, and they were critics. I interviewed them. And then I went to one of these government national nuclear laboratories that exist. There's bunches of them. Uh, Lawrence Berkeley, Lawrence Livermore. I mean, they were all over the place, so well-financed. And I interviewed some of the scientists, and they said, well, the likelihood of an accident may be a couple of minor accidents every century. Okay, so I, I did a documentary for a TV station here in the New York area. It was ping pong journalism. He said, she said, and then I, it was it was 1979, and I was out on a story, and I get the news about Three Mile Island. I said, man, those those government scientists at Brookhaven Lab, not only they tried to bamboozle me, they snowed me, and I sat down for a year, and I went through mainly government documents done at these national laboratories. Like, for example, in 1957, I was talking about Karen and Stick. Some maybe a listener will, will may, would think maybe they didn't know that these things would be so dangerous. There's a report called WASH 740 done in 1957 at Brookhaven National Laboratory, which says that you could have damages of $7 billion in a nuclear plant accident. This is the same time they're doing the Price-Anderson Act with a limit of $516 million. Uh, there was another report, the WASH 740 update, talked about the size of the area of such an accident, the state of Pennsylvania, and this is before Three Mile Island, over and over again repeated. So I worked for a year. I really, I really got, got all the documents together, and the book is actually for free. If any listener wants to get that book, the publisher has put it, and this is the last two weeks, online for free. Just download it. I mean, people are looking for it. I mean, you go to Amazon. Copies are selling now for 90 bucks because what I try to do is to use, to provide people with tools 
So like as facsimiles, I reprinted these government documents. So people, when these, these nuclear Pinocchios, you know, come at us and give us all these stories like they gave me, people would be empowered with the information. And that's how I got into it. And I've, I've been deeply into it ever since. I've written a bunch of books. Uh, in terms of my TV programs on this, you mentioned mine. I appreciate it. My blog, if people would want, want, want to see the, uh, the TV shows I've done, and also for free, these, these, these are right online for free, uh, just go to EnviroVideo, www.envirovideo.blip, B-L-I-P, Dot TV, envirovideo.blip.tv, and you'll see the videos that I've done. I mean, I, I can sit back. I'm a, I'm a full professor of journalism. I don't have to work like, like I do. But, I mean, the mainstream media, you were calling it the lamestream media. You're right. Uh, and look who owns it, GE's NBC and so forth, who made the Fukushima plants, GE. So we're not going to get the truth from these characters. So what I've been doing for 20 years, I've had a company that's called Enviro Video, and I've made – the push to revive nuclear power, Three Mile Island Revisited, where I go back to TMI, Three Mile Island area. Turns out that the utility has been paying off people whose member of the family dies of cancer. They connect to the accident. They give them a million bucks, and you're not supposed to talk about it. I interview one woman who she talked about it, and there's others that wouldn't talk about it, but they've been, they've been spreading the cash around that area of Pennsylvania like nuts for years. And uh, I, I did another show just before the Fukushima accident about Chernobyl. This is based on a book published by the New York Academy of Sciences that the New York Times will not discuss. It was uh, done by eminent European scientists. In fact, one of them, the, the chief, was Dr. Alexei Yablokov. He's, he's the fellow who originally invited me to Russia to speak on, on nuclear. Well, in any case, based on medical data now available, they determined that 985,000 people have died worldwide as a result of the discharges from Chernobyl. Most Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus, but all over the place. Okay, how many from uh, Chernobyl? 985 between 86, the year of the accident, and 2004. So you figure a million dead. In fact, that's a good baseline for what can happen now from Fukushima. I mean, there was a guy from Tokyo Electric just yesterday. This is an official saying with all the, all the releases, all this radioactivity, they expect it probably will end up to be worse than Chernobyl. A million people dead. And the, 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 the thing is, like you were talking when you started the show about, you know, power on your roof. Well, I got power on my roof. I live in a little cottage. I got photovoltaic panels on my roof. And guess who made them? Sanyo in Japan. I mean, the Japanese can do good things if, if they weren't into this stupid nuclear stuff. My, 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 my meter, because I'm not off-grid, I'm on-grid, but the meter goes backwards all the time. The utility pays me. I mean, there's safe, clean, renewable ways that don't contribute to global warming to provide energy. And, and Scientific American, very conservative magazine, just two years ago, cover issue, all the energy we'd need. And, and, and I, I don't mean sitting around with, you know, with, on firelight. I mean, having a good, normal lifestyle, all the energy we'd ever need with solar, with wind, with geothermal, with tidal, with wave power, you go on and on with all the. But the thing is that we've been forced, and, and, and your interest in, 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 in government and that government forcing us to do things, we've been forced by this really a, basically a government, government juggernaut uh, to push... Uh, Last year, last year, Senator Joseph Lieberman had a bill in Congress, because Wall Street won't touch nuclear, won't touch it, to provide $525 billion, half a trillion dollars, in loan guarantees to build new nuclear plants. Obama is, is talking, he's, he's making a little less, $54 billion. Say it fast, it doesn't sound like a lot, but that's what they're looking for. They want our lives by judgment, and they want our money. They want our money. They always want our money. How are they going to get our money? Well, you know, I want my freedom back. We're going to talk about it more when we come back. We need to understand how we got where we are on this nuclear thing. And uh, what kind of risk do we have?